When it's in half a day, the Committee on Health, Land, Justice and Culture is now called to order. Uh, it is Thursday, May 13, 2021. The time is now 9.03 a.m. Notices for this virtual public hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on Thursday, May 6, 2021. Again, on Tuesday, May 11, 2021. The notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on those same days. Uh, for the general rules of conduct are as follows. The Zoom meeting is hosted by the legislators, legislature's AB staff and, and the, the committee staff, and I thank them for their assistance. The host of this hearing will mute all Zoom participants until called upon by the chair. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by the chair before, be, before speaking and begin by stating their name for record keeping purposes. When called to speak, speak please ensure that you are unmuted. Uh, the agenda items for today are as follows. Um, bill number 67-36-COR, um, submitted by the Committee on Air, Transportation, Parks, Tourism, Higher Education, and the Advancement of Women, Youth, and Senior Citizens by the request of the Youth Congress in accordance with 2 GCA Section 7102. It's an act to add a new subsection I to Section 22107 of Chapter 22, Title 7, Guam Code annotated relative to exempting students from jury service. The next item on the agenda is bill number 68-36-COR, uh, also submitted by the Committee on Air, Transportation, Parks, Tourism, Higher Education, and the Advancement of Women, Youth, and Senior Citizens by the request of the Guam Youth Congress in accordance with 2 GCA Section 7102. This bill is an act to amend Sections 88103 and 88104 and to add a new section 88103.1, all of chapter 88, title five, Guam code annotated, uh, relative to adding youth representation to e commission e fino chamorro, zeni finatna gwen, e historia, zeni lanatla, e tautatano, or the commission on the Chamorro language and the teaching of the history and culture of the indigenous people of Guam. And to cite this act as the Manhoban Par e fino finota act. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues that have joined me here today. Uh, Senator Tony Atta, Senator Amanda Shelton, Senator Joanne Brown, and Senator Tello Taitukui. Thank you for, for joining uh, us at this public hearing. Uh, so now to move on to our agenda item, the first item, which is bill number 67-36COR, submitted by the Committee on Air Transportation, Parks, Tourism, higher education and the advancement of women, youth and senior citizens by the request of the Guam Youth Congress in accordance with sections uh, 2, 2 GCA section 7102, an act to add a new subsection I to section 22107 of chapter 22, title seven Guam code annotated relative to exempting students from jury service. Uh, before we hear from those who have signed up to testify, I would like to ask the chair of the committee um, Senator Amanda Shelton, to please introduce the bill. To do this, Masi, Madam Chair, and thank you to the committee for hearing this bill today. Again, for the benefit of the committee, Bill Number 67-36COR was introduced uh, by our committee on behalf of the Guam Youth Congress in accordance with Section 7102 of Chapter 7, Title 2, GCA. All bills passed by the Guam Youth Congress will be introduced by the committee on their behalf. The 33rd Guam Youth Congress held a regular session on February 20th, 2021, where they passed bill number 2-33COR introduced by Representative Al Edrich LeBang. This committee received the certification of passage for GYC bill number 2-33 on February 24th, 2021, and subsequently introduced it as bill number 67-36COR in the 36th Guam legislature. I will yield uh, to the representative from the Guam Community College for uh, all questions and a proper introduction of the bill. But on behalf of the committee, again, Madam Chair, and uh, to uh, the committee, thank you for hearing this bill so expeditiously. Sidious Masi. Sidious Masi, Senator Shelton. So I would now like to open um, the floor for those that are here to provide testimony. So I'd like to recognize uh, Youth Congress Vice Speaker of the 33rd Guam Youth Congress, uh, Al Edric Silabang, for his testimony. Good morning. You're welcome. You're welcome to, to provide your testimony. Thank you, Senator Perez um, and members of the committee. Um, so, of course, Bill 
67-36 is a bill from Guangyi Congress. And of course, in the past legislature, I think in the 35th, there's also a similar measure that is introduced to exempt students from jury duty. We all know that jury duty is an important duty. However, it hinders students to fully engage themselves academically. Some students miss work, do makeup assignments, miss quizzes, and make additional time on top of rigorous, challenging classes and struggle to fulfill their course requirement and jury duty concurrently. Currently, Guam law allows some other groups to be excused from jury service, which includes active members of the armed forces, elected officials and judges, active clergy members, active participating attorneys, police officers, firefighters, people who are over 65 and older, and women who are breastfeeding. And of course, they are exempted unless they choose to serve. This bill affords the students the same benefit, which is to have a choice between being accepted as a juror or choosing to serve as a juror. As a student from the University of Guam, some of my peers have experienced failing classes, receiving a lower grade, or having to withdraw a class. Some of them are taking a five credit course, which, which costs about just one class, which is a five credit course, which is about $1,000, where they have to retake if they fail the course or have to withdraw from the course. With the challenging effects of COVID-19 pandemic and students learning, it is fitting that we ease students' hardship with Bill 67-36. That is the intent of the bill, which is to ease students' hardship. As we all know, we are currently on our finals week right now, and some students are currently preparing most of their time to engage in their classes and finally reviewing their course materials to, to prepare for their final exams. And with Bill 67, I think it would give them a peace of mind to focus on completing their course requirement without wearing attending a jury duty. And I reached out to some students and I feel the reason why they're unable to come is because of the finals. And that's basically most of my testimony. All right, thank you so much, um, Mr. LeBang for your testimony. We do appreciate that. Uh, next on the list, we do have Dr. Ron McNich here to provide testimony. Uh, you are recognized, Dr. McNich. Thank you, Senator Perez. My name is Ron McNich. I'm a professor at the University of Guam, and, uh, and I've worked in the university for over 25 years. I apologize if my internet connection may be unstable, and it's unintentional if, if my internet cuts out while I'm giving my testimony. And I would like uh, to be able to log back in in case that does happen. My comments today are, are very brief, Senators. Um, first, congratulations to the uh, Youth Congress. This is a very worthy bill for them. It's certainly one that affects youth, and it's certainly one that is, uh, it shows a great initiative on their part. This idea has been around for several years, and uh, it's good that they're trying to uh, advocate for it. Uh, can everyone still hear me? Yeah, we did. Uh, lose okay, thank you. Um, uh, I just got a message. Thank you. So this only applies to students while they're in school. Over the years, I've had to uh, We'll give him a little bit of time. Maybe he'll come back on. And I think that uh, in general, this is a reasonable bill. Uh, and I do apologize. 
apologize. I did provide written comments. I think that uh, uh, many, uh, many young people There's a list of graduates, both in December and in May. That's an excellent jury pool. If, if the judiciary needs a group of young per persons to serve on juries, that's the list to use uh, in order to locate good jurors. I think that new graduates make excellent jurors. So it's not as if there's, there's no solution to this particular question. Uh, and it's a great, uh, it's, a, it's a more modified method to select jurors. Um, thank you very much, senders. And I do apologize for the internet connection. All right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. McNinch. Uh, we did lose a bit, big portion of your testimony uh, because of the internet connection. Uh, but if it's possible, uh, maybe if you can send in a written testimony to, to um, I guess, reiterate what you said, uh, if we don't capture everything in the questioning. Um, so and, I and I have sent in written testimony, thank you. You did, okay, great, thank you. Um, we did have uh, others that sent in their written testimony, um, one from uh, Stephanie Lorenzo, who is a speaker of the 33rd Youth Guam Congress. And we also did receive um, some email testimony from two, two constituents, one from Frank Ishizaki, and it states, um, Speaker Talahi, I wish to submit this written opposition to Bill 67-36 COR. Um, he states, I oppose all exemptions except for valid hardships or serious medical issues. We are solely reducing the jury pool. I believe that all citizens have an obligation to perform their civic duty. While I've never been selected for jury service in Guam or California, I've never requested exclusion for, for re the reasons proposed in this bill. Thanks, uh, Frank Ishizaki. Uh, the other uh, testimony that was received was from um, I think it's Walter Short. Uh, he states, most students have part-time or full-time jobs on top of their studies. I do not think it's right to jeopardize a student's education. Students pay their tuition and that could be affected by jury duty. Will the government take responsibility for students dropping out, being held back, or will the government pay back the students for classes they fail or have to withdraw from? Okay, that's the other testimony that was received. Um, the fiscal impact note, uh, according to the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, Bill number 67-36 is administrative in nature and poses no fiscal impact upon any funds of the government of Guam. Okay, so those were some of the additional information. And I failed to mention, and I'm sure you guys probably realize by now that I am substituting or sitting in for the speaker. Uh, she had uh, another engagement to attend to. So um, yeah, I gladly um, substituted her. Anyway, uh, okay, so regards to questions. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking back in my college days and uh, I never had, um, you know, I was never called for jury duty at the time. Um, I guess perhaps I wasn't a, a resident there, but so that's one of the reasons, um, but I can't imagine, I'm just trying to think the effect that would have on my studies. And I, I do see that impact having, um, I, I could see that impact, especially I think with the, um, the community that we have here, you know, like um, I think a lot of uh, students are, you know, they, they, uh, a lot of students have to work. So um, that, that is definitely a concern. And uh, you know whether we're going to prioritize um, their education. I think that's something um, that's important to consider. But I, at this time, I'd like to open the floor to my colleagues for any questions or comments. Uh, Senator uh, Tony Ada, if you have any comments or questions. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, do we have a member of the Superior Court uh, from the courts that is uh, on Zoom that we may be able to ask questions from? Uh, not that I can tell. No, we don't. But yes, that's something we can reach and out. I, and I think, and I and I think that's important, Madam Chair, because of the fact that, you know, I believe that the Superior Court of Guam can excuse anyone for hardship, uh, especially when it comes to work, uh, school illnesses, or disability. And uh, I know it's been done in in the past. And I just wanted to get a a take from the courts whether 
you know, uh, students have uh, submitted uh, an excuse to uh, be excused from jury service due to uh, their their schooling or and how many have actually submitted and was excused or not excused. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we'd be able to get some type of testimony from the courts uh, to um, move this forward so that, you know, we, we get a better idea and understanding of the the selection process of those that are um, attending schools. But I have no other further questions, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, Senator Ada. So um, the committee did uh, send out invitations to uh, the judicial to ju judiciary and we'll definitely follow up with that. Um, I believe uh, Dr. McNinch has some input for this question. Thank you, Senator Perez. This is Ron McNinch. I do have some very brief input on this. Uh, over the years, many times I've had to try to help the students navigate a bureaucratic nightmare with the judiciary, trying to get exemptions on this point. Uh, largely, they're unsympathetic, and, and I don't mean to sound negative toward them, but I, uh, unless I have a direct contact, and for many years I did have direct contact to assist students, it's very, very difficult to assist students to get a deliberate exemption without a, a, a quite a bit of difficulty. It's, it's highly variant. Sometimes it's very deliberate. Sometimes it's extremely difficult. Uh, I do believe that uh, simply creating this for quite a number of reasons, but uh, it is a very strongly bureaucratic process. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. McNich. We did lose uh, some of your um, input, but if you can maybe provide that too. Um, okay, Senator Shelton, do you have any questions at this time? Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any questions at this time, but I uh, appreciate the testimony from everyone today. Thank you for being here. All right, thank you. And I would like to recognize Senator Talina Cruz Nelson, who has joined us. Thank you, Senator. Um, Senator Joanne Brown, uh, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I don't, Madam Chair, but thank you very much for the opportunity to sit and listen into the testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tello Taitigui. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. LeBang, for um, being part of the process of law and, and uh, greatly appreciate uh, moving forward on, on this legislation too. I think it is important to be addressed. However, you know, um, I do have some concerns as well. Um, you know, jury, jury service is important to our democracy because, you know, it, it, it promotes civil, uh, civic participation. And, you know, it also provides a, a wide range of individuals to sit on the jury, everything from someone who's in their 40s, someone who's going to school, a student, you know, there's, there's a wide range of it. Um, and and that's, that's concerning too. Uh, we could end up eliminating opportunities for parties to a court case from having jury that's made up of individuals of diverse backgrounds. And I think that was the whole purpose that a jury selection was, was to be made for any kind of case moving forward. But I do understand, and, and I agree with Senator Adder, I was hoping to ask as well uh, for the judicial side to come and answer some questions on uh, the possibilities of, of individuals who are, well, what is the ratio of those students being released from jury duty because of hardship. Um, but there is an avenue to allow these students to be exempt um, from serving on jury duty, but there, there is a civic responsibility that everyone has to take once they turn 18, you know? But uh, I thank you, um, Madam Chair. I really don't have any questions and I appreciate everyone's testimony here today. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Tadigui. Um, so. I would like to offer the floor for closing remarks. Uh, Senator Shelton, you are welcome to provide any remarks, closing remarks. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And again, thank you to uh, Speaker Terlahi and to the committee for 
uh, hearing this bill so quickly. I know that we've uh, had several questions from uh, some UOG students who are very interested in seeing where this bill will go and members of the Youth Congress. Uh, so I look forward to receiving more testimony from uh, the courts uh, to hear how this is affecting students now uh, and perhaps from other students from the university and the Guam Community College as well uh, before we move this uh, in session. So Satuas so Masi again to the Guam Youth Congress and all those testifying today. Dr. McNinch, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for all your participation. Um, the time is now 9.20 a.m. Um, bill number 67-36COR is now duly heard. Um, we are going to move on to the next item of the agenda. It's bill number 68-36COR, submitted by the Committee on Air Transportation, Parks, Tourism, Higher Education, and the Advancement of Women, Youth, and Senior Citizens at the request of the Guam Youth Congress in accordance with 2 GCA section 7102. It's an act to amend sections 88103 and 88104, and to add a new section 88103.1, all of chapter 88, title five Guam code annotated relative to adding a youth representation to e Kimishoni Fino Chamorro, Zen e Fitnatna Gwen, e Historia Zen e Lenatla e Tautano, the Commission on Chamorro Language and the Teaching of the History and Culture of Indigenous People of Guam and to cite this act as the Menhoben Para Ifanota Act. I would again like to uh, invite the chair of the committee on air transportation, parks, tourism, higher education, the advancement of women, youth and senior citizens, Senator Shelton to, to introduce the bill. So just Masi, Madam Chair, and again, thank you to Speaker Terlahi and the committee for hearing Bill number 68-36COR, which was introduced by our committee on behalf of the Guam Youth Congress. The 33rd Guam Youth Congress held a regular session on February 20th, 2021, where they passed bill number 5-33 COR, introduced by Representative Nolan Flores. This committee received the certification of passage for GYC bill number 5-33 on February 24th, 2021, and subsequently introduced it as bill number 68-36 in the 36th Guam Legislature. And again, Madam Chair, I will yield to the representative of the Guam Youth Congress, Mr. Nolan Flores, for a formal introduction and testimony on the bill. All right, thank you, Senator Shelton. So now I'd like to recognize uh, the Guam Youth Congress representative, Nolan for Flores. Uh, welcome, Nolan. This is Masi, Senator Perez and Senator Shelton. Uh, Buenas and half a day. Uh, everyone present, Senator Nelson, Senator Brown, Senator Tidebury, Senator Adat, Zentodo Mangaigi, Kumi Pago, Nyoda Zenyot, Padahamzu, Sizo Smasi, Padung Hogoti, Estina Hiningo, Pobleku Zeni, Opportunida, Hugof San Agridesi, Todo Ibitan Mimizu, Padu Pritehi, Sustaini Zen, Adlai, Haleta, Ikoturata, Zeni Finota, Maguzu, Nagaigi, Zuguni Pago, Kumo representative. Ginan uh, Unibet Sidak Wahan Pada e Congressman Manhoping Wahan, Zapada Bay Apati e Hinasoko. I originally introduced this bill in the 32nd Guam Youth Congress, uh, where it was unanimously passed uh, at the term's end. And then upon re election, this bill became the first of mine to be introduced in the 33rd Guam Youth Congress. I'm therefore very grateful to Senator Shelton for her commitment to introduce and pass bills on our behalf in the legislature. Uh, and, and to you, uh, Senator Perez, and, and the rest of the body for the expeditious action with our bills. Um, as a lover of our language, a current learner, and most importantly, a young uh, tomorrow, this bill is a product of my desire to further augment the great work of Ikumishon in the preservation and revitalization of Ifinota. Uh, this bill ultimately seeks to ensure that these ever important efforts are especially tailored to Imanhoben as it is us, who will carry our language and all that it embodies forward. With the addition of two representatives, two youth representatives, Ikumishan will be better equipped to not only adjust its current efforts to more actively engage youth, but also utilize new and emerging platforms to meet youth where they are and equip them with the language skills uh, they need to not just ensure our language survival, but its vitality for generations to come. Bill 68-36, uh, Madam Chair, also seeks to capitalize on the cultural renaissance ongoing within our island community today. More than ever before, we're seeing young people whose, whose parents may not even speak the language, uh, have a strong desire to learn and speak Fino Samoro. 
By adding youth representatives and further empowering the ongoing work of the Commission, we are recognizing and actively furthering this reawakening of pride within ourselves and our language and culture. And we are resisting the forces of colonization that continue to harm our people. And finally, we are reasserting our tomorrow identity and placing it at the forefront of all that we do. Uh, Madam Chair, and Gensinezu, Malagazu, now not in Mega and in Agredesi, Pari Commission, especially at Sisaina, Anne Marie Arceo, Sisaina Hope Cristobal, and Sisaina Rosa Palomo, Putodu Yetzunu Niha, and Dunkluna Sizu Sma Sitatlu, Madam Chair, and Todu Namangai Kuni Paku, Sine Hu Opi, Masia Hafena, Finaisin Mitu Karabo, Sizu Sma Si. This is Masi Nolan um, for your testimony, and I think it's always great to have uh, youth engagement. I think this is an uh, important um, um, development in our political development as well. So I'd like to also recognize um, our next member that is going to testify on behalf of Bill 68 uh, that I have on the list is Angelana Sablon, President CEO of Chief Parawa Academy. Half a day, Buenas Hamzu Toru, Manana Sizuas, Pada Hamzu, Senadora, Senador Sia, Gehilo, Sana Hope Cristobal, Zana Administradora Loki, Sana Gunifi, and Maria Arceo, Sizuas Masi, Ni Tempo Mizu Pagu, Zana Naizo Kampu, Pada Bequentus Pagu, Pagu Gagan. Inan Husi Angelana Sablan, Guahui President in Chief Harao Academy. Kagi Zoguni Pagu para bayu support ti asina prinaponi i akto ni manhoben para ifenota. Penanena malagu zo para binai agreda cementu tatlu si saina hope saina gunifi as in todo i member ni komision para ifen asa i malafen si na tato ni integuiz in loku i tato ni mamaila you know seguro zo na ti lebianu asti na tato logo fen patanti pas para binai hamzu agreda cementu si zo smasi. Paraguahu importanti na guaha representasyon gini ni manhobin gihala mi komisyon i fenot sumoru. Gihala mesti na toto i kina lamtin i nina lala i fenota zani ina bansa ni manyamoru. I hinengeku na magahit na dunkulu na pati i paratana seguru na guaha dinanya zan na mangaygi manhobin gi entry i teto paramona. Kada dia gihala mi kumunedat hu liliye na kulan guagwaha na despata gi entry i manya inata dan i manhobin. Inada spata gi tiningo, inada spata gi hinengi, inada spata gi spiritu. Zau hongi na danklu esti na resol na guaha mega i minimu gi entry tau 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 ta, pori lenguahi zan i kutura, sa ati mandada nya hit esta. Gi kadat rasa, you know, gi fina lafani tempu sempriha u guaha tine laika gi lenguahi. Sa zengin manhihita, zengin ti manhihita mona gi entry ita na laika, sigi ha sampri dumangkulu i na despota. Esta mas dinahong i minalingu ni fanota. Munga loku i na paratana falingu i hinengeta zani fundasyon i kuturata. Pago na tempu i manhobin, you know, hulilie na hinasunia na siga siha mas tumungo, you know, za... Kulanti ma respetutu zi esta e te ningo i saina, zani menen halo mi saina, za ti debi e zuno, ti debi te gui. Lo hulili e lokui na kulan malilingu i prinatika ni peneksa i gine ni saina pari man hobin gi entri kumunadat, za e zu lokui ti debi. Za na gogof tristi zo esti zang inu hasu, za disti dumadankulu zo, ma fanagui zo, za hu gof li i gine pagu i natungo i patgun zani saina. Poet gi gi esti na teto, you know, i teto i i ina bansa ni lenguahin mami. Za poet gi entry i entry i naturat na tina laika ni lenguahi. Kos paraguao esti i pati ni manhobin gi kompeta shon. Za ni giniha ni saina nui manhobin. Esti sempre muna la la mona i importanti siya na tiningo. Za ni nengi gi halami kuturata za ni lenguahita. Masaya hafa na tempu malafan. Za masaya hafa na tina laika guaha. Si lalaku na parofin na maulik, toru i problema zengen mapasa esti na prinaponi. Lo, masaya siya tatatuan gwini. You know, adu mididi na iman hoben u fanyano gi kumbetsasyon. Zan loku i manyay nata gi tiningo i lenguahi zan kutura. 
Umatatuan pu moksai fu fut mat iman hobin pada umakat gamo na asina toto. Pas gofen potanti asina kena lamtin pada tau 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 ta zati sinya tatogu zengin guaha ina despata. Guaha tenanya pagu gina iman hobin pada isaina. Zalokui itatu isaina pada umapot luzi zau mapoksa iman hobin. Pas malago pada bisanya na ni ta fandanya talu pada ilinguahita pada kuterata. Then Paddy Hinengetta. Sisus Masi. Sisus Masi, Ms. Sablan, thank you so much. And um, uh, we will now um, recognize uh, former Senator Hope Cristobal, who's also a member of the Commission, for her testimony. Good morning. Good morning, Senators. And good morning, the Committee on Air Transportation, Parks, Tourism higher education and the advancement of women, youth, and senior citizens. Thank you for this to, uh, to testify uh, on uh, Bill 68-36-COR of the Acton Manhobin para i finota. First, I would, um, my internet connection is rather unstable. And uh, so I want to uh, pre-apologize for that. Um, I want to commend Angelana for her testimony this morning. It is that kind of spirit uh, that really um, uh, makes us proud as Chamorro people, that she brings forth all the points of why we need to pass the bill, but more importantly, why we need to continue to maintain our language and, uh, and continue to talk about our history and our lina la itautautano. Si dus masi for a new invitation para estina ene kung publiko. Guahu si hope e Cristobu e gehilu e commission ni finot zamoro, zani fina nagwini historia, zani lina la itautautano for short e commission. Gagi gwini loki gi. The public hearing, si Senora Anne Marie Blas Arceu, the administrator and the agencian mommy, matuham na dos para ba in support ti esti na legislacion ni tafafana ibio 68-36 COR. So menta kilo esti na hinasu yun ni famaguonta ni Guam Youth Congress in a preba zan in hezi. Na hunggan ta aumenta in numero ni membro siya gi manggehlu i komisyon za ta na saunaw i manhobin. In rekomenda lokwe, na unu ha na inapunta gini ni kongresa ni manhobin siya o manahalong gi manggehlu. Na maguf sa in rekognisa gini na piniponi na debit di magahit na ugay kapasidad za no profesyente i prohimo ni para i mem o para o membro gwini na enet no ni manggehil importante na i membro no para mana saunaw debi di ho comprendi todo ya reglamento zanilay ni gumigiha i komisyon debi lokwi di u ginigiha no i maga plano ni tsumatsalola ni todo i aktividad siya ni gwinigi komisyon Pinad i finota in i isa gi i hinta siha za debi di u listu zan u preparao esti na hobensita par hobensitu para u sauno gi i disesyon zan i tetsu i hinet non manggehilo. In komprendi loke na puri estao mami kumu manyayna importanti esti na priniponi para u sapote i tinituho ni pineksay zan inisgayho ni manhobin para u makontinuha mo na i tetsu i komisyon gi man mamayla na tiempo. Purutimo, in komiti ni inetno ni manggehilo i komisyon na parabay in adahi zan in sapote esti i aktun manhobin para i finota zabay in na siguro na bay in pasa papa gi manhobin i tiningo mami kosa ki ita Kuntinua muna lola iti na si Dus Masi kadada esti pa ako na ogaan ni puresti na obtenida at manlistuhan ang amin na dos 
zengin gua hak question ni tu. Gua halo ke no nombor telefon gua pesin apa gua nanti four seven five zero one three nine and melagu am tu in agangam izun mami no email address commission dot chamo gmail dot com. Lis tu ham jan si Anne Marie para ben respuesta i question an ni tu. Thank you, Lunas. This is Masi, Chairperson um, uh, Hope Cristobal. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I would like to now recognize um, Commission Member um, Anne Marie Arceo for her testimony. Sabine Somano had to attend to Sana Hope, who I'm in a door screen at testimony. That was our both our testimonies. So um, just to say that I support who support the Estin uh, Prinipony, the um, Tori Dos Ginin e Commissions and e Horao Kumuguahu Gehelo Samasana Gimagelo Horao Lokui who support the Estin Prinipony para Iman Hobbins and Tori Rasan put Tori Dos Samano Masang and Estaguni. She does my seat. Zuz Masi uh, and Marie, it's so great to see all of your faces this morning uh, on such a positive uh, measure. So, and I do believe that, you know, I guess the timing is just right. It seems there's a, a, a swell of youth um, act activism, I suppose, and, and wanting to um, carry out and continue the culture. And it's great that they're, you know, they're speaking the language and it puts me to shame. So <laughs> I definitely would <laughs> need to learn learn the language and learn from our own um, leaders from all ages. So, you know, thank you for being here. And um, I just, yeah, thank you for your, your participation today. I, I don't have any questions, uh, just more, more or less just support uh, for, for this measure. And um, I think that, um, yeah, it's great to see such uh, leaders come up, come up in the forefront that are so young and um, and I think learning from the signers at this time it's a good a good combination. We know that uh, in reviving our language, that combination between the grandmother and the grandparent or the the child the grandchild is very strong. And um, you know I can see that also happening uh, on the board itself. So that's a, a synergistic uh, combination um, that we need at this time. So thank you. I would like to open the floor to my colleague. Questions in English. I'm sorry. Yes, I, if I may, I invite uh, the senators' questions in English. Yeah, really, this is um, uh, a great bill. I'm so happy that it was introduced, and uh, we applaud the Youth Congress for their, as you may say, activism. Uh, this is a very important legislation because of its significant bearing on the future of our language, our history and culture, and for assuring that from now on, Ikumishon will have the input and the decision by our youth on the future of our language. Uh, it's indeed a great honor all around, and it brings to fore our responsibility to pass on our knowledge and to continue to care for and to support our youth. And I'm so happy that there it is noted in the bill uh, that uh, any member of the commission must review a strength capacity, a certain capacity, including the proficiency in the language, because for the most part, we do speak tomorrow and uh, we expect that uh, decisions are, you know, are made um, accordingly with the input of the youth having full understanding of what is that discussion. We are at a point uh, of our history now. We are newly, actually we're about four years old on this new uh, composition of the Commission. And uh, we are full-fledged ahead on our language revitalization programs, many of which uh, hopefully you will read in, in the annual report. So please avail yourself to that annual report that should be in soon. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Chairperson Cristobal. Um, so now I'd like to open the floor to my colleagues, um, Senator Amanda Shelton. Do you have any comments? Sidious Masi, Madam Chair, and Sidious Masi to the panel for being here today. 
to the commission members as well as uh, Representative uh, Flores and Angelana from uh, Chief Harau Academy. So just Masi for your testimony. And I am also in full support of this bill and commend the Guam Youth Congress uh, for their advocacy and their vision to uh, include youth members uh, on this uh, commission. And I know I've spoken with Representative Flores and other members of the Guam Youth Congress to uh, continue pursuing this for other boards and commissions of the government of Guam to ensure that we have uh, the youth vision and representation uh, in all that we do and the decisions that we're making, uh, whether it be for language and culture or uh, housing and development that uh, we have the foresight of our young people people to uh, add value to the decisions that we're making uh, every day for the people of Guam. So Sidhu Asmasi, uh, Guam Youth Congress, I look forward to uh, many more bills to come. All right, thank you, Senator Shelton. Uh, Senator Talina Cruz, is she, Nelson, is she here? I think she stepped off a little bit. Okay, Senator Ada, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any questions. I'd like to thank the, uh, the commission for their testimony and all those who participated in uh, testifying on this piece of legislation. I look forward to the committee uh, doing the, the committee report and hopefully moving on to our, our session. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Ada. Senator Joanne Brown. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I certainly appreciate all the testimony that has been provided and certainly to the Guam Youth Congress for, for providing this bill and moving it forward to the Guam legislature. Uh, listening to the comments of Ms. Angela, Ange and I just wanna make sure I get that, Angelina? Angelana, Angelana Sablon, uh, with her comments with regards to how important it is to have our young people be able to carry forward our language and our culture and certainly having a youth member uh, present and engaged would help set that, that direction, I think, very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing a lot more of our young people uh, learn the language and be immersed in the language. I mean, those of us of our generation grew up at a time when speaking our, our, our native tongue was not very common. We were raised to speak English, and occasionally we had our Chamorro classes to supplement uh, but we didn't grow up at a time where, where our language was, was taught to us and pretty much a common part of our day and our daily lives. And certainly if we lose that and if we lose our language, we're going to lose our culture. And as time goes on and as we see changes and, you know, all different types of cultures that are coming into Guam and, and living here, uh, we need to have the same level, if not more, pride in who we are and where we come from. And certainly the ability to carry that on is in our language. And so I'm very supportive of, uh, of having a youth member. And it's one of the reasons I have my son in a, a school that I want him to be encouraged and learn how to speak the language so that he can appreciate his lineage and where he's from. And I think that's what's gonna allow our, our, our history and our culture and our people to survive. So thank you very much. I'm very supportive of this bill. And I wanna thank everyone who's provided testimony this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Brown. Uh, Senator Tidegui. Sijus Masi, Madam Chair, for the opportunity and Viva Kumushoni Chamoru. I'm so you know happy this bill is is up and, and ready for uh, to go on the session floor and ask you, Madam Chair, to please push this through. It's so important being able to uh, be a part of uh, watching the commission in action right now as we're doing the uh, and it's not name changes, it's the restoration of the names of our villages. It's restoring, not changing. And I think if there's anybody that could be a great part of this commission, you know, when they're going to these meetings to speak to the community, it's our youth. It's to see them, their eyes, look in their eyes, that this is the generation we have to sustain our identity to. And it just, I, I get very emotional when I speak about this. Uh, and it, it just, I'm so happy, uh, you know, Nolan, that you brought this forward and just listening to you speak tomorrow. I mean, I have my dictionary with me all the time and trying to, you know, speak the language and, um, but that shouldn't stop any of the other people in Youth Congress or the youth out there to be a part of the commission. Um, and you don't have to be a member from what I gather, you can listen into these meetings and understand what they're doing and, and help it along. But I do have a question, uh, Nolan, with regards to the selection of who's gonna be the representative um, with the, 
uh, would the Youth Congress be open to requiring that its, uh, that its representative to the Commission be selected by a majority of vote of all the youth representative instead of uh, through an appointment by the Youth Congress speaker? Is there a small seat, Senator Tidegui? Um, yes, I, I do think the Youth Congress would be open to that, to changing that. I, I originally chose that specific wording, the appointment by the speaker, because I believe um, that's how all, all other appointments to youth boards are made in the Youth Congress. So it would be um, unique if, if we were to change it to that. But I, I do think we'd be open to that. Okay, that's just maybe a suggestion so that all, and you know, I know that Senator Sabine and I, we always talk about wanting to take our classes and doing as much as we can. And I kudos to her for uh, learning the, uh, uh, in a fresh sea without looking at the paper, <laughs> you know, like most of us. So, and, and I, I'm on that road too of, of doing the same thing. Um, Angelana, you are an inspiration to us all as well. And I just want to thank you uh, for being here to testify in favor of this uh, legislation. And, um, and thank you again for in teaching our youth, you know, the language that you do at Haral. And Anne-Marie, of course, an inspiration too as well uh, to me, you know, just since I've known you. Biba, you know, for everything you're doing and, and God bless you and everyone. Hope, uh, of course, I'll be there. Anything you need and, and help with the commission to keep it going um, because this is our identity. This is who we are. And if we lose that, we've lost everything. Everything. So, Biba commission, Biba tomorrow, and see you tomorrow. See you Senator Chaitagui. Um, so I believe we were expecting more people to testify. Um, I believe the, the person is not arrived yet. Perhaps um, we can accept written testimony in, in it on his behalf. Uh, so at this time, um, perhaps I would like to allow uh, closing statements by Senator Amanda Shelton. So to Masi, Madam Chair, and again to the Guam Youth Congress, Representative Flores, and all of the panel members here today in support of this legislation, I thank again uh, you, the committee, and Speaker Terlahi for hearing this bill so expeditiously, and I look forward to it uh, moving quickly so that we can act on it on the floor and uh, look forward to the continued collaboration with the Guam Youth Congress uh, for these types of initiatives. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Shelton. I'm sorry. I forgot to um, offer the floor to Senator Ada. I, I do apologize if you have any, I know I'm going out of order here, but if you have any comments or, or questions. Uh, Madam Chair, you did recognize me earlier. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so um, at, I believe there are no other testimonies or uh, questions by my colleagues. Um, you know, at the time, the time's now 9.50 a.m. Um, Bill 68-36 COR is now duly heard. And I believe um, the committee is gonna be in recess until 11 a.m. for the next bill. Um, so thank you to all that have participated today and for all your comments. And we'll look forward to moving this bill forward to do as Masi.